Hi, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to take an in-depth look at navigation in SwiftUI. SwiftUI and navigation haven't always been the best of friends. However, in iOS 16, things actually started to significantly improve with APIs like navigation destinations, as well as the new navigation path APIs. These APIs allow us to actually build UIs that we can programmatically navigate in, which was really hard to do previously. Before iOS 16, we could manage which navigation links were active and which weren't, but really it wasn't reliable and it wasn't a nice API to work with. So now that we have navigation path and navigation destinations, we can have model-based navigation where we can actually model a list of navigation items that we have shown to the user and we can manipulate that stack however we want. In this video, we're first going to take a look at navigation destinations and how these work. So I'll show you how you can add a navigation destination for a given model uh, based on a certain view so that whenever you click on a navigation link, you pass a specific model and then we render a view. The second thing I want to show you in this video is how you can use a navigation path to manipulate the navigation stack that a user is seeing. To do that, I will be running a live demo for you and we'll be seeing the code show up and I'll talk about what I'm doing as I'm doing it. That way you can get all the benefits of actually seeing this thing come to live and we can actually look at the different versions that we have of navigation destination and navigation path uh, without having all the slides on the screen like I normally do. So let's dig into a demo and I will see you at the computer. Okay. So what we've got going on here is a pretty simple SwiftUI view that presents a list of workouts that you might have done. Every workout has a bunch of exercises in it and every exercise keeps a log of the weights and everything that you've used. So what we want to be able to do is actually allow the user to navigate from the uh, workouts list into a specific workout, from the workout into a specific exercise and we could go further and deeper but i think just having two models to navigate to will be enough to get the point across so what we'll do first before we do anything else is we will actually make this view so that it has a navigation uh, view around it now starting in ios 16 navigation view is actually deprecated so we should be using something called a navigation stack so I'll go ahead and use a navigation stack here. We can already see that there are two initializers for it. Uh, one that takes a specific path, which is a binding to a navigation path object, and one that only takes a route. For now, I'll take the one that only accepts a route to be passed. Uh, what I'll also do is I'll put a navigation title here of workouts. And so that will put us in a navigation stack, as you can see in my preview here. Now, I cannot navigate yet. To set up navigation, what I need to do is I need to wrap my text here in a navigation link. And there's a couple of different initializers that we can use for navigation links. A lot of them are deprecated. These are the older ones where you actually put a destination to navigate to inside of the navigation link. What we're looking for is actually the title value um, overload. So I will actually use, hold on, I don't want that one. I want this one, the value label, right? So value is what we'll navigate to, the model that we'll use to navigate. And the label is my custom view. Uh, so in this case, I want to pass my label like this. And my value has to be something that's hashable. So we can do this. Right? So I'll pass my workout as a value and I will use the, um, text workout name as my label. So nothing has changed really uh, in the list other than you can now see that there's an option to navigate. However, there's no registered navigation destination for our workout, so nothing's working right now. So what we can do is we can actually add a navigation destination to our list. Navigation fix that typo navigation destination for 
uh, destination. That's the thing that we want to use. We want to be able to set a specific model type and then a destination for it. We can also choose to use an item or is presented, which would allow us to trigger this navigation's um, destination either by toggling a Boolean value or by assigning a value to an item that we keep as state on our workouts list. In this case, I don't want any of that. I just want to say whenever we navigate to a specific model, go to this specific view. So for every workout that we might navigate to, so that would be workout.self, the destination is going to be whatever view we want to return. So in this case, I want to return my workout view that accepts a workout as a model. So after writing this code, I can now navigate to my workouts. So that's pretty cool, that's working now. Uh, notice that this looks pretty bad, so let's quickly clean this up a little bit by putting the actual workout name as a title. So we'll do navigation title, workout name, and we'll get rid of that V stack that we had here so that you can see how this looks when it's a little bit more appropriate. Right, and to actually navigate into our exercises, we can also use the navigation link. And again, we'll use the value label overload. So we'll say navigation link value, so we'll pass it an exercise, and we'll pass it a label, which will be our text object. Now notice that if I go into a workout, I cannot go into any of my exercises, which makes sense because we haven't registered a navigation destination. Now, the cool thing about the navigation destination API is that we can choose where we want to specify the navigation destination for our exercise. What I like to do is to just specify all my navigation destinations at the beginning of my file or at the beginning of my navigation hierarchy. So in this case, on my workouts screen, so I can Go on ahead and set a second navigation destination for, and in this case, it's going to be exercise.self and my destination for the exercise is going to be an exercise view. I will pass this exercise right here. There we go. So now when I run my preview, you'll see that I can go into an, a workout and then into an exercise to actually see information on the exercise. Now the exercise view could use a little bit of cleanup too. So we'll just go on ahead and put a navigation title on my VStack for the exercise dot name right there to make everything look just a little bit better, right? It's still not perfect. It's still not pretty. It's not a fully designed, um, application, but I think that's completely fine. The point never was to make something that looks beautiful. The point is to show you how navigation destinations work. Now, if I were to move both my navigation destinations to a different location, for example, in here, what you'll see is that my navigation is now broken because at the level of workouts list, there's no navigation destination registered for our workout, right? So you always have to register either above or at the level of your navigation link. In this case, everything sits above every navigation link or at every navigation link because I can uh, click this one, which will find the workout destination here and it registers for self, uh, for exercise.self so that whenever I click this one, I also get the exercise one. It's incredibly useful to be able to define your uh, navigation destinations in this manner because you can just group them all together wherever you like them to be. Now, if I were to copy and place another navigation destination, for example, right here, where I would maybe expect this to overwrite uh, what happens over here, that is not supported. Uh, whenever I run this app and I just did that uh, in a little quick cut, uh, what we get printed to our console is that only the destination declared closest to the root view of the stack will be used. So if I do this, only the one that is closest to the root view of the stack, which would be 
this one is going to get used. So be careful with registering them all in one place. Like it is what I like to do, but it does come with a downside, which is that you might not be able to overwrite uh, what you would want to overwrite. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. Now, earlier on, you saw that a navigation stack can actually take a navigation path. And by default, navigation stack will actually create its own navigation path, but we can also do that. So we can say private var path becomes a navigation path that we can now pass a binding to to the navigation stack. Now this on its own doesn't really allow us to do much, but what's really, really powerful is let's say that I want to allow users to click a button to go back to the root view of my app uh, from within an exercise. Right, so for example, here on my exercise page, I might want to add a button. Uh, maybe I'll add it right here, maybe at the end of my list. I guess that makes sense. Uh, so we'll change the list a little bit so it becomes a for each. I'll take all that stuff, put it in here. And do that. So that should work now. It does. And then at the end of the list, I can actually just say button uh, with some action and a text that says jump to root. Right, so that would allow the user to actually go here, click my button, and go back to the start of the app. So to do that, what we can actually do is take a binding to the path, which will be a navigation path, and we would receive that from uh, right here in our workouts list, because that's where we create that navigation destination. So here I can actually say path dollar path. So that gives a binding to the navigation path to my exercise view. Now note that both my navigation stack and my exercise view are going to be able to manipulate the exact same navigation path. So whenever this view right here changes the path, it changes the exact same navigation path that's used by the entire navigation stack. And that's really cool because I can actually just go ahead and do things here. So the first thing I'll do just kind of as a demo is I'll do path.append, right? So this doesn't implement the jump to root functionality. This will actually append something to the path. Uh, so I'll append to the path uh, maybe exercise.list, which is a static var that I have created in this app, dot zero. Or maybe we'll do dot list random element. Right? So we'll just put a random exercise on the list, um, just so that you can see what that works like. So I'll click here, I'll click here, and now I can jump to root, but that will actually uh, push a new exercise onto the stack, which does give me an error. I'm curious what that error could be as I'm actually adding an exercise, but the exercise that I'm adding is an optional. And apparently instead of giving us some error or a warning or something else, the navigation destination simply says, I don't know how to render this. So if we force unwrap this random element that we're getting, now we're actually appending an instance of exercise rather than an instance of optional generic over exercise. So it's a small thing. I really wish that that actually gave us an error, but as you can see now, we can append stuff to our navigation path. What's also kind of fun is that we could add another button to this view uh, to allow us to go back uh, one level, for example. Uh, so, our text will become back and our action is actually going to interact with the path again. And we'll just go and do remove last on this. So this will just remove the last one item. Okay, so we're still not jumping to root, we're just jumping one level back. All right, so we can see that I can keep going in and whenever I click back, we go back one level. So that's pretty cool. And we can pass a number to this remove last. So we could also go back uh, three levels if we wanted to. All right, so if I do that now, 
we actually crash because we go back more than what we actually had on the stack. So if we try that again and we actually make it so that we don't go too far back by jumping to root a couple times and then we go back, we go back by three every time. And we can use this to our advantage by actually saying remove last and we'll just go ahead and remove this and implement jump to root. So path dot remove last path dot count. And so that's going to remove everything from the path. It's essentially going to clear the path entirely. So we're just going to jump to root and there we go. Right? So this way we can actually manipulate our navigation stack, uh, allowing us to implement features like deep linking or popping to root or these kinds of things. Another way to do pop to root, by the way, would be to simply reassign our navigation path here. Uh, that one's a little bit more uh, nuclear, I would say, like it's very rigid, uh, but it also works, right? So that's two ways. You can just remove all the elements, creating a navigation empty, uh, creating an empty navigation path, simply by removing all elements, or you can just make an entirely new path. It's up to you which one you prefer. So that shows off navigation destination as a way to manage where we should go based on model navigation. So for every exercise, this is the view that we want to draw. For every workout, here's the view that we want to draw. And I've shown you how you can use navigation path to actually get the user where they need to be in your app, either through navigation links or by interacting with the navigation path directly, for example, by popping to root or by appending new elements to the path. Uh, so that the user can navigate. So that's all really powerful and really cool because it enables programmatic navigation in a whole new way that we just haven't seen before. I really like these APIs and that's why I wanted to show them to you today. Let's wrap up this video. Okay, so that is the live demo done and you've seen how you can use navigation destination and navigation path to build a UI that you can navigate through just like you would expect with the added benefit of being able to programmatically put the user exactly where they need to be, which is a really powerful and useful tool to have in your toolbox. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this video if you've enjoyed my demo and enjoyed uh, the content that I make for you, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.